Hi, and welcome to New Every Day. My name's Carrie. And my name's Jen. And on today's show, we're going to hang out on Solomon's Porch. So stay tuned. episode of New Every Day. We're coming back to our Acts series, Mm -hmm. the Acts of the Apostles. We kind of took a break when we went on our trip to Tennessee, which was amazing. Yes. And right now it's, you know, after Christmas, we're into February. Um, Maybe even a little bit of March. A little bit of March, yeah, by the time these these air, yeah. Yeah, and so here we are finishing off chapter 5, and so we're going to just pick right up. I'm reading from uh, the New Century version. And so we're going to start in chapter 5, verse 12. And it says, The apostles did many signs and miracles among the people, and they would meet all together on Solomon's porch. None of the others dared to join them, but all the people respected them. More and more people, men and women, believed in the Lord and were added to the group of believers. The people placed their sick on beds and mats in the streets, hoping that when they that when Peter passed by, at least his shadow might fall on them. Crowds from all the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those who were bothered by evil spirits, and all of them were healed. The high priest and all of his friends, a group called the Sadducees, became very jealous. They took the apostles and put them in jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors to the jail and led the apostles outside. The angel said, Go stand in the temple and tell people everywhere about this new life. When the apostles heard this, they obeyed and went into the temple early in the morning and continued teaching. So I think we'll we'll pause it right there. And you might be wondering, why did you call this hanging out on Solomon's porch? And uh, just to give a little bit of background, in the Old Testament, uh, King Solomon built the temple. Mm-hmm. And then when Herod rebuilt it, uh, he created in one of the entrances, over one of the entrances, uh, I want to say a covered area. So it's where there was more shade, so it was good for teaching. Okay. And so that is called Solomon's Porch. Or I've heard it called Solomon's Colonnade. Is that the same yeah. thing? Yeah, same thing. One is NIV, one is New Century. Okay. So it all depends on what um, what version that you're reading from. Okay. Yes. So when we talk about hanging out there, it's because that is where uh, the believers would go and meet together. Like, hmm. that's where the center of worshiping God was, was the temple. So now who, uh, I'm always kind of surprised in reading that there were like temple guards. Right. And the Pharisees and Sadducees had a lot of power there and could order people to be apprehended or guards to do um, certain activities within the temple. So were they kind of like the administrators of the temple and all that went on there? And like were they responsible for kind of keeping an eye on what is taught in the temple? Well, Pharisees were like the devout believers. Uh, They were the ones that kept all of the laws. Mm. Um, I would say they they were your devout followers of God. They knew what the law said and they kept it. Mm. So people wanted to be a Pharisee. Like they they would look up to these men who were, were teachers and keepers of the law. And so in the time of, of Jesus, it was a good thing to, to be, be a Pharisee. Pharisee, like just because they were so devout. Mm. Um, and it was when Jesus came, he said, it's not about being devout and knowing the law, it's about knowing me. Cause I, so he's saying, you should have seen that I am fulfilling the law. Right, if you know it so well. Yes. Yeah. But they wanted to keep their... their um, rituals and their teachings and they had laws about how to keep the law like mm-hmm. they had the law themselves were in the Old Testament and then they would sort of set up like cushion cushion laws yes yeah so okay we're not gonna break the cushion law because then 
You're it, one step closer to breaking the real law. Yes. Yeah. And so they had like 400 plus other laws to follow. Wow. And so that's why to be a Pharisee, you were actually very much revered. Like, mm. wow, these are holy men. And yet Jesus came and said, no, you're following the rules. You're not following God. Because he said they're like, like whitewashed tombs. Like you can be totally sparkly clean on the outside, but inside you can be dead. Yes. And not not have the regenerating life that comes from Christ and believing in Him, which is what the apostles were offering these people. And so when they would meet on the porch to talk, this was the words of new life that they were sharing, right? Yes. And so you have this budding of, well, you have one teaching, which is Jesus has come and he has fulfilled the law. And that's what they're teaching, right? But the Pharisees didn't accept that. So you do very much have this butting of heads, and because the Pharisees were the ruling party, the Pharisees uh, believed that people could be raised from the dead, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Sadducees were, were more of the parliamentary people, mm -hmm. and they did not believe that you could be raised from the dead. And in Jesus' time, they, it was the Pharisees who had more control, from what I understand, and then the Sadducees then later on had a little bit more control. But were not necessarily religious based. Like they, they had, they did not believe that you could be raised from the dead. Okay. But the fair, but the Pharisees were much more like law based, right. whereas uh, the Sadducees were more into the politics. Okay, that makes sense. Of things. That's why they're sad, you see. See, because they didn't have anything. Yeah, no. And they didn't believe that you could be raised from the dead. That's, That's sad. sad. <clears throat> um, Okay, so the apostles are there, and uh, people are bringing their sick out to the streets and laying them on beds and couches so that even the shadow of the apostles would fall on them. And I kind of thought, like, man, it, oh, uh, that kind of seems like way out there, right? Like, people aren't coming to our churches and laying people who are sick to allow the Christians' shadows to fall on them. No. That they might be healed. But then I thought, too, like, is it is it there? act of faith mm. they are stepping out in belief that they are proclaiming the truth about God I'm bringing my sick family member here to be healed mm. I don't know I, I always I, I find these incredible things in Acts and say well like well why doesn't this happen today right and it's interesting because it only says Peter it doesn't say any of the other apostles right and it, yeah it says the apostles so you're assuming that it's all of the apostles right but but why was it hoping that when peter by at least his shadow might fall on them hmm. and so i always found that interesting that it was it was peter so what was it about peter's shadow um, or is that just well i have to believe because it doesn't mention any of the other ones it says they were, people were all healed but it was peter's shadow they were hoping well, he may, it does seem like he was the most outspoken after the day of Pentecost. He yes. gave the first sermon, and then you see him, you know, doing a lot of the of the speaking and having authority and stepping yes. forward. So I don't know if maybe he was kind of seen as like the leader. The leader. Mm -hmm. Well, that could be very true. Mm -hmm. And what I also find interesting is that they were exactly where they were supposed to be. Like we talk, we talk about you know where do people go to hear about Jesus and we laugh because of Christmas and Easter Christians who come Christmas and Easter but they come knowing that that's where they're supposed to be like that's where they're going to hear about Jesus that is a good point <laughs> right and so the <sighs> apostles were exactly where they were supposed to be if people wanted to get close to God then they're there to tell them then they're there to tell them they're in the temple like, it only makes sense that the apostles were there because they were, one, commanded to be there. They would meet together. That's where yeah. Jesus did his teaching. Um, and, and if people wanted to get close to God, um, often they would come to the temple and they would offer sacrifices. So here mm -hmm. the apostles are exactly where they're supposed to be. So people who are coming to hear about God. Which is interesting hear. because Jesus would go and teach in the temple. Mm -hmm. But then he would also say to his possible, come, let's go to nearby towns and tell them about the fact that the kingdom of God has come, because that's why I've come. Mm. So it's like he would speak in the temple about God, 
but then also go to the surrounding communities. And, and the early church is kind of doing that too. They're teaching in the temple, but then later on, and we'll see later in the next uh, couple of shows, what the impetus of that spreading mm. was, but then they went into, into nearby towns and then consequently all the world. And I think that in the church now, Jen, that there is a role for that, that we need people who are going to be solidly teaching the truth about Christ in the church. Mm -hmm. So when we bring people into the church family and into activities there, there's consistent teaching that this is the, this is the true word, this is the life that we're called to live, but then in the next step to go out into the community and not just stay with, behind our church walls. Mm. So let's think about that and we'll be back right after these messages. Jeff Weston, Yama. you're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? You need hosting. One of the things about a hosting account is you don't want to have limitations put on your website. It's true. How much hard drive space do you have? How many email accounts? How many domains can point to it? Well, we've got an amazing deal for you. For a very limited time, cat5.tv slash dreamhost. For just $5 and a bit of change per month, you are going to get unlimited website hosting, unlimited email accounts on that hosting uh, service. You are also going to receive a free domain name. Ooh. So your own .com. Nice. To put that amazing website that you've been working on it's on true. there. If you run, if you want to build a WordPress site, fine. Sign up. Cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Just don't put Panama Papers on it. Just don't do it. But hey, uh, it's a great deal, folks. Best deal you're going to find. $5 and change per month. Go to cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Hey, and welcome back. We are picking up talking about hanging out on Solomon's porch and the apostles in chapter 5 of Acts are healing people and doing all sorts of amazing things and teaching it on Solomon's porch. And we're going to read here now at, seven, chap, after, at verse 17, chapter 5, that there's some people not very happy about it. And we read here that then the high priest rose up and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, mm -hmm. and they were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. So it's, it's the Sadducees. It's interesting, right? They're the ones who are, like, have that political yep. uh, persuasion. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also don't believe in the resurrection from the dead. And here the apostles are claiming... Jesus is risen from the dead, mm -hmm. and we are doing these works in his name, a dead guy who is now living. So, of yeah. course, there's the rub there. Um, verse 19 says, But at night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. What does your version say? Uh, everything about this new life. Okay. Interesting. So what are those words of new life? Like what, what was the, th the thrust of their message? We see them doing these, these acts of healing and drive, you know, he driving out demons. Yeah. But what are the words of the new life that they're sharing? Well, I think that's the gospel news, that Jesus has come, like the Messiah has come. And it, the, that veil has been torn between the, of what separated people, and they can now have a relationship with God. They don't have to offer the sacrifices anymore. They don't have to have, um, the high priest does not have to go in behind, you know, and offer that sacrifice once a year, you know, the atonement. And Jesus is the atonement lamb. And that's the good news. Like, they can have a relationship with God on their own. He is the fulfillment of the law. Right. And so... It, 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 what's interesting is my, my verse 17 says the high priest and his friends uh, became very jealous. And jealousy is the fear of losing something. Okay. So I think that they got all miffed because they're like, whoa, like people are joining their group. Mm -hmm. Like, so that means a couple of things. Um, 
one, less money for the high priest and the temple taxes and potentially, uh, but also um, they didn't want to cause any uprise in Jerusalem. And because if, they, if there was an uprise, spe specifically between Jew, uh, uh, religious sects, uh, sects, it's a hard word to say, <laughs> religious groups, um, then the Romans would come in and squash it. Right. And there wouldn't be anything. Right. So I think the high priest here thought, okay, we got rid of Jesus. Like, what, what's the deal? Like, I thought we, we squashed it. We did away with this. And then here are these men who are continuing to preach uh, about this man named Jesus. So I find it very interesting that uh, they put them in jail out of jealousy, out of a fear of losing. Like, it's, mm -hmm. and it goes back to, you know, what Jesus was taught, teaching. Like, you hear, you hear, but you don't hear in your heart. Like, you hear what I'm saying. Like, it says, those who have ears, let them hear. Mm -hmm. But they weren't hearing. Like they were more concerned about losing their rank and yeah. their their place in society than actually hearing the word of God. Well, what's also um, interesting is that yes, there were fear. There was a fear of losing rank. But I think what what the apostles were proposing with this new life, it would shake up everything that was familiar to them. Mm -hmm. Right. So all like the religious institutions and sacrifices means of praying to God, of, of hearing Him, L like what their culture was based on was their religion. Yes. So when someone's purporting something that's going to shake up everything you know, I can see why there would be a lot of pushback, especially for those to whom there's some kind of financial gain from the way that things are already set up. But Yes. But I can, I can, I can get that. Mm -hmm. And you know, even when I've spoken with other Christians maybe who have experienced God a little differently than I have. My first reaction ne isn't necessarily, oh, mm. please tell me more about how my, my way of doing church and, and interacting with God can be different. It's kind of like, oh, that's nice, but this is working mm. for me. But is it really like, do I want words of new life? Yes. Am I really willing to learn about something new that might shake things up? Mm. You know, I think that's That's a great kind of question. Mm -hmm. Are we will? Are we willing to actually, you know, hear someone's story and, and receive the truth of their story and how they've connected with God? Or are we more like, mm, yeah, I'm glad you met God that way. Yeah. Because it can be a little scary <laughs> sometimes because it's like, you know, I, oh, what does that mean for me? Right. And am I, <clears throat> excuse me, is there going to be a more, more of an expectation on my life? Like, um, Someone in my family shared a story with me of this guy from uh, the United States who used to be like a, a priest of Satan. Right. And legitimately had influence over his community and other people by, by his relationship with Satan. Hmm. Like would talk to him and engage with him and then do all these crazy things and murder people. And, and then he got saved and came to Christ and now he's sharing with the church of how you can pray effectively against the spiritual forces of evil and you know what sometimes I don't like to talk about that because it makes me realize that maybe my prayers are not what they should be hmm. for my own family for my own community for right. my church and so I was like oh, that's nice Ooh, that's kind of scary should I think about this a lot more like what do I do with it you know? interesting and yet I think what we do with it is exactly what the apostles did. Like, mm -hmm. the angel busted them out of jail, which would have been amazing. <laughs> There's a lot of um, door busting. I know. Acts. And then I love the fact that it says, open the doors of the jail, let the apostles outside. The angel said, go stand in the temple and tell the people everything. And when the apostles heard this, they obeyed. They went in the temple early in the morning and taught. Yeah. Like... That's it. That's it. They went. <laughs> they just went and did it. They just went and did it. Yeah. And how hard would that be? Like, they just got in prison. But really, if, if the, one of the worst things that could happen to you already happened and God busted you out, you know, we can do it. And isn't that interesting? Like, a song that has continued to come to my head over and over and over again 
is a song by Don Moen. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. God will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely by to his side. Yeah, like, I can never remember the last two lines. Um, for love and strength in each new day, he will make a way. He will make a way, I think. You can Google them. But it's like God will make a way where there seems to be no way. When we choose to obey, which is like they were where they were supposed to be, and they were teaching people about Jesus, which is what they were supposed to be doing. And people rose up against them, which Jesus said would happen. Right. And they got thrown into jail, which they knew were go was going to happen. Like everything was going according to plan. <laughs> so it should not surprise us that an angel of the Lord would show up and bust them out. And yet it does. Like Now, I have probably read this passage 35 times. And yet it doesn't surprise me as it should. Like, what, do you, what do you mean? Like in the sense of, wow, like could you Look imagine? I just read it as, oh yeah, an angel of the Lord busted them out and I keep reading the page. I'm like, an angel of the Lord busted them out. Like, <laughs> well, like yeah. it, it's surprising and yet it shouldn't be surprising. Like it, when we read it, we should be like, yeah, God. Now, is it because like in your heart, you think it's not for today? No, I think it's, I've just read it so many times that I'm, it's just like, oh yeah, an angel busted them out. Yeah, an angel busted them out. Next. Them. <laughs> Next. Okay, let's just keep reading. It's like, and, and what did that even look like? What did the angel look like? And how come the guards didn't know? Or like, were the guards sleeping? Or was this, I have heard in some some jails where the jail was a part of a person's home and so the jailer would literally go to sleep at night right so they'd be locked in and leave them and the jailer would go to sleep so it makes sense like that could have been an option of why there weren't necessarily guards there I, I'm uh, that's a guess uh, but the apostles were exactly where the apostles needed to be mm. everything was happening exactly how Jesus said it was going to happen mm. and yet it goes back to that the, the passage in Psalm 34, 37, where um, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Like when we are right with God, we're not forsaken. And it sounds like, you know, as I read this, uh, and I'm skipping back to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego too, they said, you know, we're not going to bow down and worship. And if God wants to save us, God will save us. And if he doesn't, we're okay with that too. Yeah. And this is very much reminiscent of that. Yeah, true. Like, we're going to do what God has called us to do. We're going to teach. We're going to heal. We're going to cast out demons. You're going to get upset with us. You're going to throw us in jail. All right. So be it. So be it. And so we want to encourage you to think about that this week. One, are you where you're supposed to be? Are you, like, they were supposed to be at the temple teaching. Hmm. So are you where you're supposed to be? And are you doing what God has asked you to do? And do you believe that he'll see you through no matter what? Hmm. So on that note, we're going to pray. So Heavenly Father, I thank you so much. I thank you so much that you have never seen, that I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. That when we are where we're supposed to be, when we're doing what you're, you've asked us to do, then you will see us through. And you are faithful. So, Father, I pray for every person that's listening today that you would challenge them with those questions. You challenge us with those questions. Are we where we're supposed to be, and are we doing what we should be doing? So, Father, we, we thank you for your word. We thank you for how it speaks to us. Lord, help us do what you've asked us to do. In your name, amen. Amen. Thanks again for tuning in, and thanks, Jen. Like, I feel like every time we do this show, I, I learn something and just really enjoy this time together. So thanks to all of our partners. If mm -hmm. you want to go to our website, neweveryday.tv, click on our partners link, and you can see all the amazing um, organizations who are supporting us. Mm -hmm. If you would like to um, make donations as well to help keep this show going, we certainly would um, appreciate that. And we hope that you have a wonderful week, and we're going to see you back here next week as we continue on the porch. Have a wonderful week. Cheers, See you now, later. Friend. There's a piece of plant in mind. It's clean. Well, maybe not. <laughs>